Hey, what is going on guys? Max Settings here and welcome back to another review. In today's review, we are going to be taking a look at the Head Audio Headphone. Now before we hop on into today's review, I just have to give a big shout out to Flux from Discord for providing this headphone for review. And I will be returning this back to him when I am done, but thanks to him for supplying this unit for this review. But anyway, the Head Audio headphone here is a very interesting headphone. Came out last year and it received quite a bit of hype. And by far it's biggest, uh, I guess, selling point or its biggest talking point is that this is a fully AMT headphone. It is a full range AMT driver where there have been some other headphones on the market that are hybrid designs that use like a dynamic driver and then like an a and a uh, AMT woofer. This one is completely AMT, so a full ranged AMT driver, which I believe is the first full range AMT headphone since the ESS AMT one that came out in the early 1970s. But of the modern era, this is the only full AMT headphone uh, in existence to my knowledge. But anyway, let's go ahead and get specs out of the way and then we will hop on into the headphone. So the headphone here is coming in at a 42 ohm impedance with a 87 dB a milliwatt sensitivity and a weight of 718 grams. Okay, so now I'm moving into the build of the headphone. So the headphone's build has been a bit of a point of contention, uh, more so particularly for its comfort uh, factors. But starting with the top headband here, you have a very fat, like this diameter of this is very fat, uh, headband pad, no strap. And the padding itself is uh, not the greatest. I, I wish there was more of it. It's a fairly dense foam and they are kind of going for that like split headband thing where there's a little dimple in the middle and then these two bits here are raised uh, a little bit so when you wear it it's supposed to hit like the sides of your head and leave the little gap in the middle. You have your slide adjust mechanism here which is metal and you don't get very much of it so that is one of the I guess controversial areas of this headphone. You get uh, these metal yokes here, plastic on the side of the cups, metal grill, and then these like rectangular, I believe these are protein leather pads. They might be leather, but I'm not 100% sure. I think they're protein leather. But anyway, and with a little bit of perforation inside, and then mini XLRs on the bottom, so same as Odyssey, ZMF, etc. And that is the general build on the headphone. And then as for its stock cable, uh, this is the stock cable, it's a quarter inch cable uh, with like a paracord sleeving. It is very stiff. Although I do really like the, the quarter inch jack, the metal head branded jack looks very nice. But yeah, this is a pretty bad cable. I would recommend getting something aftermarket for this headphone. So now into comfort. Uh, the comfort of the headphone is probably its biggest point of contention. Uh, to me personally, I find it pretty uncomfortable. Now its biggest issue is that there's not enough height adjustment, like this click system. There's just not much of it. I believe it's only two centimeters of adjustment on each side. Now they did, they did just do a recent revision to this that added an extra centimeter, but I think it's still gonna need even more than that still because I don't think a full centimeter extra is gonna help a lot of people. Now to me personally, uh, my ear is smashing right against the bottom of the pad on the maximum extension. So I guess another centimeter would help that, but if you have a even slightly larger head than mine, even that extended one is just not gonna work. So if you have a larger head, definitely avoid these because they will not work well for you. And then to add on to that, they're quite heavy. These weigh roughly what an LCD four weighs, but there's no suspension band. And like I mentioned, I don't think the headband padding is sufficient enough. And I get a hot spot on my head very quickly with these, like let's say 20 to 30 minutes at best. So overall, the headphone I do find uh, very uncomfortable. And it's also quite wide and the weight hangs very far off the side of your head. 
with I'd say pretty poor weight distribution. So headphone fit and comfort I don't particularly like. Now as for power requirements, the headphone is actually very hard to drive. This is gonna be one where I do think a Magni 3 Plus will definitely probably get it loud enough, but I could see this benefiting from more powerful amplifiers, something with a little bit more gain. Uh, something like maybe JDS Atom would maybe not quite do it, but uh, Asgard 3 or one of the THX amps I think will definitely power it no problem, but it does take a significant amount of power where most headphones you really can get away with very low power sources, I don't think you can on the head, HEDD headphone. So you will need a fairly beefy amplifier for this, but it's also no HE6, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so now moving on into the sound of the headphone. So one more area that I wanted to cover here real quick, and I think this deserves its own segment, is the driver crinkle. This, at least this particular unit, I don't know if they're all like this, but this particular unit exhibits tremendous amounts of driver crinkle. Now, if you have had some like Odyssey Planars or E-Stats, you may know what driver crinkle, crinkle sounds like, but the headphone is the worst driver crinkle that I've pretty much ever heard. Uh, it seems to have gotten better since I have like had this on hand for whatever reason. But when I first got it, the driver crinkle was so severe that any movement of my head, like if I looked in any direction, it would just crinkle on both sides. It was so bad that the slight twitching in my jaw, just from my heartbeat, you know, if you put your finger on your jaw, that's an area where some people can check their pulse. That little slight just twitch in my jaw from my pulse was making them crinkle. So. With my heartbeat, it was like boom, boom, crinkle, boom, boom, crinkle. It was, it was really, really bad driver crinkle, and that alone for me uh, is a deal breaker. I could not own and use this headphone just off the driver crinkle. Again, it seems to have gotten a little bit better, but it's still very frequent, and it's incredibly annoying to me. I don't know if they're all like this, but this particular unit definitely exhibits some severe problems with driver crinkle. So moving on into the sound of the headphone. So this is another one that I think the ears is wildly misrepresenting from its graph. So take the ears graph with a grain of salt. So starting off with the low end, the headphone does have some roll off about 5 dB below 50 or 60 hertz. Now, despite this being a fully sealed front volume, which they pretty much had to do to get the extension out of it, it does roll off a little bit. After that, you have a really weird dip in your lower mid-range uh, at around four or 500 hertz. There's a strange little dip in there that seems to have a, like some weird distortion going on. Uh, and then the problem with the dip at four or 500 is that it comes back up to what would have been flat at around like 800 to 1K, but the problem is, is that the mids roll off after that, so it almost seems like there's a 1K peak that can be mildly shouty, but nothing too, too terrible. After that, the rest of your lower and upper mid range is a little bit recessed, I'd say three or four dB, and fairly inconsistent. And your treble comes back up, and it's not too bright, it has a little bit of boosted treble, and it has some pretty crazy air, like the above 10K has a lot of air, and I could see it being too much for some people. So the headphone frequency response overall is kind of strange has some weirdness going on with its mid-range. So I'm probably gonna be going against the curve here, but I don't think the headphones detail is anything crazy. Now this thing is coming in at about 17 or $1,800. And I don't think it's necessarily like segment leading for its price category. I think it's decently competitive in uh, the thousand to two thousand dollar space but i don't think it's any flagship killer or anything too far ahead of anything else i think this is about on par with the realms of like the lcdx the aria things of that nature i don't think this thing is massively more resolving or detailed than 
uh, higher end flagship headphones. It's acceptable for its price, but I don't think it's anything spectacular. Now, in terms of dynamics, uh, it's overall fairly punchy and it's pretty fast. Uh, the macro dynamics are pretty good. Uh, it seems to smear like the micros a little bit, but the macros overall are fairly decent. I'd say it punches about on par with a decent planar, like in the realms of like an LCD2 or LCD3, but not, not as good as a really good dynamic driver or the top end slamming planars like the HE6 and the LCD4. But it, it sounds about a planar in terms of its dynamics. Now, in terms of timbre, it is a weird mix of like plasticky timbre with some of that ethereal Estat timbre. It's it's really strange. I guess it's its speed. I think the uh, the decay is a little bit too fast, and it's giving some of that Estat timbre, but. It's just a weird, weird mix of like a plastic and etherealness to it. So it sounds fairly unnatural. Now, in terms of soundstage, I'd say it's fairly wide. It's a pretty wide soundstage. I don't still don't think it's HD 800, but it's stage is fairly wide. Uh, and then imaging is also pretty good. I think it images pretty well. I'd put it above average in terms of imaging. And that is about all the technical aspects for the headphone. So now as to what I think about the headphone and some comparisons. So the headphone is coming in in that really, really competitive $1,000 to $2,000 segment that I think I mentioned this in like the LCD X review or maybe the Aria review, where this is the price segment where you have a lot of big players. You have the HD 800S, you have the Aria, you have the Clear, you have the Otor. Uh, the LCDX, the LCD3 is sitting at like 2,000, the LCD2 at 1,000. So you have a lot of players here. So the question is, where, what does the headphone do that makes me take it over something like the Aria or like the Clear? And overall, I don't know. It's, it's an interesting thing. So it's, it's very fast. It has good speed but it's not the fastest in this segment it has very good detail but it's not the most detailed in the segment it has good stage but it's not the best stage in the segment and overall it's just kind of mediocre it doesn't have good bass extension uh, the bass needs some more extension because it sounds kind of limp in that really low sub bass area the timbre is not that great the detail is good, but nothing spectacular. So overall, I'm not sure why I would take this over something like the Aria or the Clear. The tuning's weird. I think the Aria is better tuned. The Aria has got a bigger presentation. It sounds more natural. So the headphone to me is fairly meh. I don't think that it does anything that stands out, but do I think it sounds bad? No, I think it's I think it sounds pretty good. I actually would say that I like it, but I just don't know why for its price I would take it over a lot of the other competitors in this segment. And to me, this thing seems more like anything than just a tech demo. Now, it's a pretty successful tech demo, in my opinion. It does show off uh, that perhaps AMT drivers do have a place on the market but they definitely need some more fine tweaking but of driver tech demos that I've seen recently this is definitely one of the better attempts at it and props to head audio for you know managing to make a full range AMT headphone I think they did a good job all things considered and I think people will pick this up to uh, just to tr see what an AMT headphone is like it's a cool thing to experience. This isn't to me like another one of those things that you buy to try because it's interesting more than anything else. Like something like, I don't know, like the RAW ear speakers or like the K1000 or the MySphere's. Something like that that's more so about the cool factor and how different it is. More so than necessarily being the 
most competitive thing at its price point. So overall, headphone uh, definitely needs some comfort in build fixes, uh, some tuning work, but overall good attempt at pretty much the first of its kind. And if you want to try it out, I do think it's pretty good. But do I think it's the best thing in the segment overall? No, I don't. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed my review of the Head Audio Headphone. Links of where to buy this in the description below, as well as my Twitter, my contact email, the ears graph, and all other relevant information. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. Look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.